It's the absolute height of those autumn colors that we all want to capture. So let's talk about autumn photography because if I'm not mistaken, it's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday where every single week, every single Tuesday, you get a brand new fresh photography tutorial. Now this week, we're talking about autumnal photography. So all things autumn. And there's loads of different things you can do with autumn photography, whether it's landscape, whether it's portrait, you can go and get loads of different stuff. There's all the amazing colors, there's all the amazing atmosphere, everything that makes photos look amazing. It's one of my favorite times of year to shoot, not least because I feel like the sunlight is just generally softer. It's just more pleasing to look at. We're gonna run through five tips for capturing that autumnal photography. So tip number one is all about shooting in the right lights. Now it's a little bit of a cliche point and I say it in every single tip of the video, but actually that is for a reason. Light is the most important aspect for photography. It's gonna shape how your photo comes out in terms of the quality, the sharpness, the color, everything. It's so important, especially if you're going out to find a nice landscape, it's worth doing that at the right time. So when's the right time? Well, there's loads of different things you can do. So with autumn photography, I'll generally try and go out and shoot around sunset or sunrise. That's generally what I recommend for anyone taking photos is that's gonna be the best natural light. It's nice and soft and it's nice and golden tones, which are gonna just, just emphasize those oranges and reds and yellows that you find in the trees. Now, sunrise and sunset also is great for, for silhouettes. So if you wanna shoot, with some silhouettes in the landscape, that can look really, really nice, just against that autumn sky. But of course, autumn's not always super sunny and lovely. Sometimes you get those overcast skies. I mean, recently, when I've been going out to shoot, it's always raining, it's always raining. But that, you can use to your advantage. So you can go out and you can use the moody skies to create some atmospheric shots, to get those moody shots, the dramatic shots. So it's not all about just sunrise and sunset, Sometimes you want to shoot with the, the moody skies. I think it's also worth experimenting with the light as well. So especially when you've got the sun lower in the sky, it almost works a little bit like a directional light. So you can kind of place it. Now you can move yourself around to actually change how the light is going to fall on whatever you're shooting, whether it's a landscape, whether it's uh, you do portrait, anything like that, you can move around to change how that light's going to fall. Now, I think it's worth trying a bit of backlighting. I'm really into that lately. A bit of backlighting in your photos. I think it's worth shooting into the sun. I think it's worth shooting with the sun behind you, you know, just to get the golden tones across everything. I think it's worth trying side lighting as well. Try some different stuff, especially in portraiture, where it's so easy to move everyone around. Just try some different stuff to really experiment with that light. Now, tip number two is to focus in on the color and the mood of autumn. So whether you want to go for getting the reds and the oranges and the yellows and really emphasizing those in your frame, or whether you want to go for the slightly more moody autumn shots where you've got the, the, the dark, intense skies, you know, the rain everywhere, whether you want to go for something where you've got fog and mist, you know, sunrise is a great time for mist this time of year. You get it across across landscapes, across rivers, all kinds of stuff. And if you can if you can do that and get a bit of the autumn colours, oh, now you're talking about some photos. Now you're talking about some really nice looking stuff. It's important to remember that if you do look outside and it's not particularly nice weather-wise, you can actually use that to your advantage. So if you can't look for colour because the sunlight isn't there, it's all very flat and Whoa, a bit drab and not very nice. You can go for mood and try and find a moody shot. So all's not lost if the sun's not out. So tip number three is to add a human interest to your landscape shot. Now, I've been getting really into doing this. I love shooting landscape stuff, but I've really been enjoying putting someone in the frame. So whether they're walking off into this amazing autumnal wood or whether they're just sitting there looking over this lake, I think it adds a lot to the scene. It creates an environmental portrait kind of on the line between that and a landscape shot. It adds an extra visual interest to the shot. It gives a way for someone, the viewer, actually looking at your photograph, to kind of enter in. So let's say you've got this person sitting there looking out over this beautiful lake and the autumn colors on the other side. You now get that interactivity between her looking over the lake and you're pulled in and through the photo, experiencing it with her. 
there's just an extra element and it kind of just it just tips it over the edge in terms of of good photography you know it just adds to it and gives you foreground background it's a great way to to add something to your autumn photo now tip number four is to look out for reflections now the reason i say this is it has been raining so much recently that everywhere there are puddles and there's water and you can get some really amazing reflections. Reflections are good because you can double up on those amazing autumn colors. You see an awesome tree with red and yellow leaves, well now you've got it reflected, it's in the scene twice. Amazing, you know, a big body of water and then a tree line, oh, lovely. You can get, you can get the trees twice, but it looks really visually interesting. It's a very nice thing to look at. It's a great way to kind of just enhance your photography. If you can look out for that, whether it is a big lake, a pond or anything like that, or whether it is just a puddle that you just get down low and use that reflection to your advantage. It's definitely worth keeping an eye out for. And tip number five is to pop those colors in editing. Now, whether you use Lightroom or Photoshop or anything else, there's loads of different software out there. I tend to use Lightroom and Photoshop, which is why I'm saying those two. But whatever you use, there's loads of ways to pop the colors. Now, you can use something like the Hue, Saturation and Luminance tab in Lightroom. You can go into Photoshop and affect the Hue and the Saturation, stuff like that, and really get the colors exactly as you want. So maybe when you're at the scene yourself looking at it, something looks incredible with these burnt oranges, and the reds and the yellows. But when you get back and you look at the raw file, maybe it doesn't pop quite as much and you wanna, you wanna add a bit of contrast on there, you wanna probably add a bit of saturation on there, really get those colors going. You know, make it look how you, how you saw it, how you envisioned it when you were there. You can add a lot in post, being relatively subtle, and it's not going to look like you've done anything. It's just going to look like, wow, what a beautiful scene. You know, maybe the orange just needs bringing down a little bit just to become more of a burnt orange. You can affect that in the hue. Maybe the white balance needs changing. But you can do that with the raw file. So there's a lot you can do in the edit, which I think it's worth taking a look at, just to make sure the photo ends up exactly as you saw it or as you exactly as you want it to be. Now, I've tried not to go too cliche on some of these some of them you know it's difficult to avoid look for color you know it's autumn obviously you're gonna want to do that but i've tried to avoid too many cliche things here but that's absolutely not an extensive list of tips that's just five tips and there's so many different ways to capture that autumn photography so let us know down in the comments if you have any of your tips of your own because i'd love to hear them i love hearing what you guys think about this kind of stuff. It's really interesting any experiences you've had where you've done different things. You can pop any questions you might have down there as well. I'll pop a, a link to all of the different kit that I use for these photos in the description of this video. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe for more content because we've got new tutorials every Tuesday. It's in the name, in fact. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.